Welcome back, everybody, to the European LCS as the Copenhagen Wolves and SK Gaming take to the rift. SK Gaming back with Candy Panda in, well, what is their first, uh, I want to say real test, but it's also their first test. So <laughs> let's start with taking a look at the lineup for the Copenhagen Wolves who return to the LCS with their spring roster intact. Young Buck, Airwax, Soren, Freeze, Unlimited, and their coach, uh, Dentist. As said, their roster is intact, one of the only teams not deciding to make a change in their lineup and just make adjustments within the team going into summer, which is a bold choice with all these changes going around. I definitely think that it is. This is a team that, you know, barely made it into playoffs and then in the playoffs really didn't seem to find their stride. And the general consensus is that the EU summer split has gotten better, has gotten stronger. So to stay with the same players where you could start arguing there's potential weaknesses. Uh, dentist and the coach seems to have faith in, in his team and we'll need to see if they've grown over the off-season enough. And I, I think it's it's a weird one because just about every other team that did make changes, it was in the AD carry role. I've said that so many times today. It yeah. was the AD carry shuffle uh, for the summer split. Freeze is still regarded by most players as mechanically one of the top 80 carries in Europe doesn't always have the platform from the team to show it, but I think sticking with their roster is a bold move, but it could very well pay off with the rest of the teams shuffling things about. Yeah, Freeze uh, actually also seems very realistic. He said in a Reddit AMA about his expectations, I would be super glad for seventh place with the big teams we have in the LCS, but I think we might be fighting in relegation. Um, that brings up a couple of questions because, of course, if you say, you know, if you're Freeze and you know you have that mechanical talent and you have that raw talent in there, it, it just means a lot that he is willing to stay with the team and the coaching staff, so he must have a lot of trust in the project. I agree. And, you know, the thing with the Copenhagen Wolves, right, this is a team that are friendly. They they get along incredibly well. They've said it multiple times. You can see them the way they interact with them. Even in their losses, they're generally like, okay, look, what went wrong? You know, they're positive about it. And, you know, Stress, you've reiterated the AD carry shuffle in summer and how the teams have all gone around. It's interesting because Europe has been uh, pre predefined with how strong its mid laners are up until probably this year. Now, all of a sudden, AD carries and supports are coming out of the woodwork from nowhere and really performing well. That's not the Wolves' problem. Mm -hmm. For the Wolves, it's the top half of the map. Young Buck has been struggling. We're in a carry meta. He doesn't carry. Soren is not really showing up a whole lot. And, you know, Airwax is still hit or miss. So for me, the problems are in the top half of the map. Things can change. You play tanks. You get, you know, a, a hyper carry, maybe. But a lot needs to have changed for me to be convinced that they're going to make seventh uh, in summer. Yeah, and I feel like you mentioned that's a different problem for them, but it actually stems from the same problem, this thing that we've said that the teams are evolving to be multi-threat uh, dangers on the rift, and if you don't have the pressure in that top half and maybe from out of the jungle, you're not going to be able to to get that ball rolling either, Stress. For sure, and speaking of multi-threat, going all the way back to some of our other teams here, we're looking at how many teams are at least two threats, possibly three. I would say Fnatic are our only three threat, real three threat team in the LCS. Uh, a lot of teams are two threat. Copenhagen Wolves, Soren and Freeze are struggling to carry in the Cinderhulk meta. That leaves them at one, maybe one and a half threats on their team at a push. Yeah, we will see uh, how they do. As Free said, the expectations aren't too high from them uh, and even just not wanting to get into relegation, but they will definitely have to win this <laughs> game versus SK Gaming. SK Gaming, who, of course, did make a change in their lineup. So let's take a look at that one on the red side. Freddy122, Sven Skarin, Fox, Candy Panda, and Rated, and Material Boy. Well, we are living in a material world. Um, SK Gaming, Spring Split, dominating the standings or being on top, but then playoffs, falling apart, especially in that best of five versus H2K. Definitely the case. And I actually want to touch on two things. First of all, the SK style mm -hmm. is going to get completely changed. We heard Sven Skeren right at the top of the show today saying, look, Forgiven's gone. It, we tried something. It didn't work. They've gone back to the same player that got them to Worlds. You know, these are five guys that have performed on the world stage together. And I also think the coach, who Material Boy is the team's uh, former sports psychologist, who's been on the coaching staff for a year and a half now, if memory serves correctly, with him being on heads during picks and bans, and I actually think during an extended series, there is such an amount of value that you can get from a qualified sports psychologist in a best of five. The problem is they need to play nine weeks of games, make it to players before we can really see that. But I'm interested to see the impact that this man will have on the team when we know there are some emotional players uh, within the squad. It also is very difficult for the same reasons is, yes, you have uh, that mentality aspect coming from your coach, but on the other side, you don't have a coach that you can lean back on when it comes to high level, 
in-game, in-depth uh, strategy. You look at the likes of a Prolly, who we've talked about, Dentist, on the other side of the rift here today, who can provide that strategy aspect as well in picks and bans. It, it's there is one caveat, young gentleman. <laughs> Daylor is a former poker Very professional. True. Very true. Does not come from a League of Legends background. It's a different style. Yeah. However, it can work. I, I completely agree. And, and that's, it, it's team dependent on what coach fits the Agreed. team. Agreed. So as long as SK can compensate for this, there is absolutely no reason why it can't yeah, work. It all depends on uh, the trade-offs you are willing to make. A trade-off SK has made in the offseason is bringing back Candy Panda, who, well, it's very familiar to see him back in that SK jersey. Happy to see him back on the Rift. But the question is, when it comes to skill and what he can bring, how high can his level still be, knowing especially that they've played with this Forgiven, who racked up all the CS and took up all the attention on the team. I completely agree. Those are questions that we'll have to come, we'll have to see, I think, later in the split. I do think Candy Panda and Rated will be a little tested here by Unlimited and Freeze. I think it's a difficult duo to come up against. But we just saw on that little stat, 133 professional games. This is a guy who's been around a very, very long time. Experience, nerves, stage pressure, I don't think that's going to get to him. The question is performance. Is he up at reckless level? Is he forgiven level? Is he freeze level? Yeah. How well is he going to perform from the offseason? Because stress, I'm going to save you from having to say that again this time. He's <laughs> not played in a while, not played on the stage. So how will he perform? Yeah. And uh, taking a step back, of course, we focus in on Candy Pan and the way he, he plays alone. But how he works in that team, taking a step back, knowing the amount of attention that Forgiven soaked up in that lineup. How is SK gonna, going to play? Are they going to have to adapt a different play style, knowing that they won't do those early uh, tower pushes and trying to get the ball rolling off that? I think the definite answer is yes. Mm -hmm. If you look at SK last year, you, you actually felt they had a multitude of options. They would almost always lose early game and win mid and late game through intelligent, smart plays. They were a very smart mid to late game team that struggled in lane. The one, the other thing about Forgiven leaving is how much does this free up in rated? This is a guy who had a lot of question marks on his shoulders because he constantly had to hold Forgiven's hand, mm -hmm. constantly had to push towers and work with him and, you know, play Forgiven style. I don't think that same level of pressure is going to be there. So what does in rated do now that Forgiven's gone? And I don't only really want to compare the, from the support as well. Uh, a big factor or a big change now between the World Championship SK and the current SK now, different mid laner. Jez is the former mid laner of SK all the way back last season. Very different kettle of fish when it comes to mid lane champion pool. Uh, the, the joke is that he's, he's a control mage player, a lot of zigs uh, player. That's you know what people like to yeah. humorously say. However, uh, Fox on the other hand. Can the lineup control the mid lane using Fox the same way they did with Jezzes to stall out the games to allow their strategy to evolve? And that's, you know, two different players, two very different play styles. I'm interested to see how Fox gels with an old lineup. Yeah, very interesting. But on the other hand, uh, you know, if we keep looking at what changes and what forgiven brought good to a team with the coming in of Candy Panda here. Maybe Freddy, who we know is a fantastic top laner, but hasn't really taken the forefront as much as he has last season. Maybe he will be freed up to take more of the attention out. I actually agree with that. And I think that's a brilliant point that you bring up because um, I was one of Freddy's biggest fans last year. I loved his play style, his decision making. Um, but throughout the spring split, Honestly, you could count so many times Deficio saying, and Freddy is staying top lane. Freddy values far more than his life. Mm -hmm. And it happens so many times to the point that because he was complaining, Freddy's mother complained on Twitter to Deficio, <laughs> right? I mean, this is like one of my favorite stories. But let's see whether or not he's freed up. There's, there's all these questions that day one of Summer Split starts to answer. Yeah. Uh, and it'll get settled in game when we see if they've evolved and if they can adjust from that one through one. Yeah. And maybe final question, because we haven't touched on him yet. Sven Skeren, who almost single handedly on his Lee Sin took SK on his back over at the playoffs. But, you know, what will he show here? Yeah, he's got a lot of work to do, but Sven Skeren's done it before. Uh, he, there's a lot more on his shoulders now, but I honestly feel like he's a player that once he hits his stride, he's going to be comfortable. Honestly, from both of these two teams, there's a lot of potential there, but also a lot of questions still to be answered. Sven Skeren has got a massive backpack. <laughs> I don't know if it's needed today. It might be later in the split. We will see. It's time to see what this SK Gaming roster can do in 2015 as we send it to the caster desk. We'll hear how, according to Freeze, SK's change in the bottom lane isn't a loss for the team at all. They will have to just adapt. They still have super good players. And now, instead of having a forgiven carry every game, they have those players where they can put resources on Fox or Freddy and those players can 
carry as well and the meta is more about those players right now so I don't even think it's a loss and they will be a tough opponent to face. Well guys, Freeze is confident in the new SK lineup and of course it is a little bit like an older SK lineup with Candy Panda back now, Crepo, but uh, what do you think this new SK will bring? Um, I think Enraided uh, for one has a lot to prove. Uh, yes, he was tied down a lot in in the Forgiven lane. When you play with Forgiven, you pretty much have to stay around him because as great as a player he is at CSing and pushing on the tower, I don't. I think one of his weaknesses is that he doesn't react well to roams. So Enraided was always clustered in the lane, and he's not the best laner, so he's a better roamer. But we'll see if that translates in some of the picks.